In the previous episode, I began this journey into the desert with no food and limited water. Thanks to recent rains, I was able to find a good source of water soon after entering into the mountains. I drank, filled up my bottle, and then enjoyed a refreshing swim. This pool was a real surprise find, especially at a time when most of the beaches of the world are closed. I crossed over a rocky mountain and in the bottom of another canyon I found another good water source. I replenished my water needs and began to build a shelter to spend the night. Using branches and leaves I quickly put together a simple shelter with a fire by the entrance to give me a little comfort to help me get some much needed rest. I ate absolutely nothing on this first day and only slept about two hours. I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor, CuriosityStream, for helping to make this series possible. CuriosityStream is an on-demand platform for award-winning science, technology, history, and nature documentaries. I absolutely love the documentaries about the history of food and how early man survived on this planet. Since kids are spending more time at home, CuriosityStream is inviting families to stay in, stay curious with enhanced kids programming and an incredibly good deal for an annual subscription. Right now, you can get thousands of non-fiction titles and kid-friendly documentaries for $12 for the whole year. That's just $1 a month. So go to curiositystream.com for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And for my viewers, enter the promo code TARZAN when prompted during the sign-up process and your membership is completely free for the first 30 days. As the night went on, the temperature dropped and I spent much of the night maintaining the fire and heating rocks to place under my poncho to help keep me warm. The hot rocks actually worked quite well. I allowed them to get as hot as I could safely handle them without burning myself. Several hot rocks placed under my poncho kept me warm enough to sleep for two hours. Spending the entire night on the ground in the same position caused my entire body to ache. This looks like it will be a good digging stick.
As I said the previous day, cattail fluff is one of my favorite materials to use when starting a fire. Placing the end under the hot coals hardens the wood. After sanding the end on a rock, it is ready for use. I am digging up the root and tender leaves of a young cattail plant. The base of the young plant can be eaten raw or cooked. The root, on the other hand, is too tough and fibrous to eat raw and should be cooked. I'm always searching for wild edible plants and berries. I had never before seen this berry, but it reminded me of lemonade berries, which I absolutely love to eat. Just like lemonade berries, these are also very sour and even help quench thirst on hot days. I let the cattail root cook in the ashes of the fire for about half an hour. Then I washed it, peeled it, and ate it. Cooking improves the flavor of the starch and makes it easier to scrape the starch from the tough fibers. After breakfast, I left my camp and hiked towards the mountain peak to explore more of this wilderness.
One common characteristic of this landscape is that there is a lot of thorny bushes. Fortunately for me, this deer skin provides a lot of protection. This is probably the largest California juniper tree I have ever seen. Juniper berries were a common food source for many native tribes in the southwestern United States, and they are also one of my favorite wild foods. And then I saw another tasty food, miner's lettuce. Miner's lettuce has a lot of water content and a very mild flavor. It is called miner's lettuce because it was commonly eaten by miners during the California gold rush to help prevent scurvy. Scurvy is a serious disease caused by vitamin C deficiency. It's the middle of the day and this shadow stick compass will help me determine directions. Resting in the shade during the hottest part of the day helps prevent fatigue and conserve water. The stream is very close to here, so I can easily get more water. I waited about two hours before placing the second stone on the shadow of the top of the stick. Then I connected the two stones with a stick and that line shows the east to west direction. Crossing that line perpendicularly with another stick shows me north and south directions. This shadow stick compass works best in the middle of the day. After hiking a couple more hours, I climbed to the top of this rugged peak.
The peak that I had been observing since I started this journey is still far away. I won't be able to make it there today, but maybe another time. By the time I returned to my camp, I was exhausted. I reclined against a rock and ate juniper berries. I want to be sure I have plenty of wood to keep the fire burning tonight. Hopefully I will get more sleep. My plan tonight is to try and rest early before the temperature falls. When it gets cold, then I will start the fire and use hot rocks to keep warm. Without the fire, the night would be long and miserable. The temperature isn't freezing, but the heart rate slows down during rest, which makes a person feel colder than when they are active during the day. Without a warm blanket, it is just too cold for me to even fall asleep. But the fire and hot rocks make me feel a lot more comfortable.
I managed to sleep about four hours on this night. As this adventure comes to an end, I reflect on the lessons learned. The best outdoor experiences are those that are difficult, uncomfortable, and even painful. The less gear I bring, the more I learn, because I have to be more creative, I have to think, I have to investigate, and I have to have faith. What is it that draws us to the wilderness? For me, it is the desire to feel closer to the Creator, to reconnect with that which is simple and pure, to be free to feel alive, to truly feel alive.